Hello and welcome. It's December the 26th, the day after Christmas, which interestingly enough is my wedding anniversary. And I'm out enjoying some pretty hazy, cloudy, gray weather, but it's relatively warm. It's like 50 degrees, which is pretty good for us for December the 26th. But I have this latest toy, which I've had for several months, but I haven't really made a video in quite some time, as you know, if you're watching the channel. So this is the Sony A9 III, and I have a 24 millimeter lens on there right now. I thought I would test the stabilization with you. It's right now on dynamic active, and that's, it's actually really pretty good. I'm just holding this in my hand and walking. I'm not doing anything special today to compensate for that. Of course, you get eight stops of stabilization built in, but also then the electronic stabilization with dynamic active. So that's what you're seeing. So tell me what your thoughts are, how it looks for just walking and my arms stuck out here and just doing my thing. So I'm gonna show you some examples of dynamic active and then just their regular active stabilization and we'll, we'll go from there. It is important to note this is a Samyang 24 millimeter lens. I do have an indie filter on there because if you know anything about the A93, you know it's base ISO is best. It's like calculated at 2000 ISO. Very interesting. Anyway and anyhow, I manually set the focal length, not required to do that, but I manually set it in the stabilization section, just so there wouldn't be any confusion since it's not a Sony lens. Still seems to be working pretty well. Anyway, here's some dynamic active stabilization while walking. I'll show you a few more clips. Normal walking, not ninja walking, not doing anything special. Just walking down a trail. Also, I have this sling bag on my back, so it's kind of bouncing around, which isn't making my gait any better as far as trying to be smooth, but it's kind of the point. So I wanted to show you a real world test of how this stabilization, dynamic active stabilization does. I think like a lot of people, I have this dream that maybe I could someday not have to use a gimbal. Um, <laughs> not that a gimbal's a big deal. I've got two of them, actually three of them, but the point is, it's just more stuff to carry around and more stuff to keep track of and, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So this is a light setup. It's really nice to just be able to take one thing, but such is life. One thing I'll say about the A9 III and the A7R5, which we have a couple of those as well that we use for business stuff. One of the things I'll say about it though is that <clears throat> this tilt flip screen that they're using now is a fantastic addition. It's, it's so good. It's not like Sony came up with that originally though. Let's not fool ourselves. Panasonic was doing it first. Lots of people forget that though. Really one of the selling points of this camera, of course, is the global shutter and its ability to shoot 120 frames a second photo. Absolutely ridiculous what you can do for sports photography. I do some sports photography and I've actually had clients paying me to take sports photos. That being said, I don't really need this camera to do that. It obviously is a luxury, but uh, wow, pretty fun. Here's one of my favorite spots that I think I've probably shown you before. I don't know why it's a favorite spot. I think just because I think these rocks are really cool. Lighten this exposure up for you just a little bit. Um, when the water is really raging, you can't even get down in here, but it hasn't rained that much lately. So it's just a nice, peaceful place to hang out. The sound of the water is really fantastic and you can you can easily get down here on the rocks. These do get slick with the moss, so let's hope I don't kill myself here. Because um, everything right now, today, is super wet and slick. But <clears throat> as I slip slide around on this, I wanted you to see what the stabilization of this camera was like. 
And from what I've used it so far, it's really pretty good. Uh, you do suffer a little bit of a crop. I think it's probably 10% if I was guessing. I'm sure someone could look that up and get the specifics, but I really like um, how it functions. Global shutter is interesting. If you don't know what global shutter is, you could certainly do some uh, digging. <clears throat> but in essence, global shutter is, instead of having a traditional shutter that goes up and down, this is ele all electronic. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the interesting things is, is that when the shutter, instead of reading it, um, having a readout, it reads the entire, sh the entire sensor at one time. Uh, it's great for things like LEDs where you can have banding. I have that trouble a lot, in, particularly in arenas. So, so if you go to some football and soccer stadiums, but also a lot of like, you guys may know I've photographed some bull riding and things like that. It's really bad in those arenas for whatever reason. I think it's the cheap lights they use, but they have really bad banding in photos. Uh, but this shutter uh, is one shot of the entire sensor, and so it eliminates those bands that can show up in your photography. That part is really nice. Also, rolling shutter for video, if you've seen that, where things look like they're angled uh, from whip pans or moving objects. I don't find that to be particularly a huge problem with the things I use, but either way, it is helpful to have a global shutter in that regard. So that was another selling point for me. Honestly, um, 120 frames per second for photos I have no need for and rarely use. In fact, most of the time I'm shooting 30, I would say, at most, uh, for sports stuff. And that's more fast-moving sports things like basketball, volleyball. But, man, it sure is great to have it if you want to play around with it. Now switching you over just to active stabilization. I'm not changing anything about how I hold the camera. I just want you to see the difference. You can probably tell a little of that crop difference. The other thing that's interesting about the dynamic active is that on top of that crop, you also have instances where you move the camera and it seems like it kind of sticks for a minute and then moves. That's that electronic stabilization kind of keeping up. So as I walk out of here, I'm just gonna Gonna go the same route I came in. Try not to fall, because everything is slick. I want you to see the difference in the stabilization and see what your thoughts are. I'm not gonna hold the camera any differently. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I still don't think that the active stabilization is still really good. Um, it's just less of the e-stabilization. So I'm back on the trail now, walking like I was before. I wanted you to see that, kind of get an idea. A little bit brighter up here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ND you down a little bit. These are easy to switch between, it's just a menu item. And so even if you're using it for video work, you can switch between those. I would think that for action or things that are moving pretty good, that dynamic would not be the thing to use. But honestly, in those situations, you don't really need it anyway. But if you're in slow situations, handheld, where you're wanting to kind of just stay on a subject, having dynamic is a really nice option. So this is the Sony A9 III. Hope this is helpful for somebody. I know when I was looking for things, I wanted to learn more about the stabilization. Here's my Samyang lens trying to catch up. Obviously, the best autofocus is not with a third-party lens that would be with one of the more major manufacturers probably but I had to stay around thought I'd use it most of the time it still works fine this is on the wide setting 
which does have their latest autofocus, which is pretty nice. But with a third-party lens, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good still, so. Anyway. Thanks for coming along. Switching hands. I'm just holding on the side of the camera now, so there'll probably be more bounce. But you can see the difference. Here's my setting. That's where I'm at. This is uh, Bear Creek Trail. Um, I've been here before. I do a lot of videos out here just because it's quiet. So I was looking back at the channel and I saw that, you know, I've made, I, I don't remember the exact statistic, but well over 400 videos have been made. And I started this in 2012, 2013 time frame. And you guys know that my stuff has been sailing, biking, travel, photo video stuff over the years. I've been involved in all of those. And out of all of them, the photo video is the one that's kind of stuck. So I'm back to making some of that content. I still shoot photo and video professionally and that's always fun. I have other business with a buddy of mine that you guys see a lot, Jerry. and. So we still have medical practice and all that stuff, but the photo video is the stuff that's kind of stuck. It's the stuff that uh, yeah, I'm kind of passionate about, but yet couldn't really get passionate about making videos necessarily. You know, it's been six or eight months and channels monetized and all that stuff. And, I, and people always ask, oh gosh, it's an opportunity for you to make some money. And it's like, well, it's not really why I do it, but it's nice to have those features and it does help some of the costs, although not really, you don't make any money off this unless you have like 100,000 subscribers or something crazy. So anyway, just want to say thanks for watching and hanging out, even though I'm not on here all the time. Hoping to get back to it, maybe. There's a bridge, let's go over that. It's a fun area to explore and hang out. The trail we were talking about is just right up there. That's where we were just at. I just kind of came around the corner down into this creek bed. This is that bridge we just crossed. If it would focus. Uh, the same Yang lens is not the best at focusing. It's funny, I have lots of Sony lenses and I grab this one just because it's light. Kind of an interesting reason, I guess. This is all shot in S-Log3. I usually shoot about one stop over, just in general. Seems to work well. Graded with the Phantom LUTs, which are fantastic. I'm a big fan of them. Again, dynamic active stabilization. And once again, Ninja Walk, trying to be steady. I'm not the best at this. And trying to be normal. Not trying to be. <laughs> Made it back from that walk and I'm sitting down here editing this video and just wanted to kind of wrap this up. Hopefully this was helpful. I had questions about what would dynamic versus regular stabilization look like with this camera or anything that had the eight stop IBIS that Sony has. So I was looking for things like this. I hope this is helpful for you if you're looking as well. If you have questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll happily try to answer for you. I'm still experimenting and playing around with the video side of these cameras. So 
Uh, I've shot a lot with the A7S3s, FX3s, and things like that, which have uh, five stops IBIS. So I was interested to see how this would compare. Anyway, if you have questions, leave them below. Thanks for coming along with me today, and I uh, hope to be back making a few more videos. So see you again soon.